In today's video, I'm going to be giving you the top 10 tools to develop your plastic scale modeling hobby. Stay till the end of the video though, because I've got a bonus and I'll talk a little bit about another very popular tool which I've not included and the reasons for that. Just like my beginner's tools video, which you can find here if you've not seen it yet, I'm going to tell you what I personally use and recommend in each of the categories in the video and giving you links to those products below, though they or equivalent products will be available elsewhere in your country, I'm sure. So with that aside, let's get into it, shall we? Models, especially the smaller scales, can have really timely or fiddly pieces at times, or have really awkward areas to access in the model. That's where a set of tweezers comes into its own and will really help you, especially when you start using items like photo etch sets or resin parts. I like to have a very small angled pair like these for adjusting things in hard to reach places and a couple of reverse grip tweezers as well. These need pressure to release the jaws and are useful for tasks like holding small parts in place whilst also having to manipulate something else like an undercarriage bay door. Whatever your age and condition of your eyesight, some of those smaller parts are going to require some sort of magnification to be able to manipulate and paint them well. What sort of magnification you need depends on your existing eyesight and what you're going to be using them for. So something like these VisionAid magnifiers which have different types of lenses you can put in are ideal. I also like these because they're very light and you wear them just like glasses, which is a big factor if you're going to be wearing them for extended periods. You certainly don't want your vision aids to be giving you stress or headaches. Light is so important for a hobby, and yet I rarely see it mentioned to beginners. Your eyes need light, and generally speaking, the smaller something is, the more light you're going to need to illuminate it properly. All light is not equal, of course, as the color temperature of a light affects the perceived color of the objects you're illuminating. At one time, this meant expensive and hot daylight coloured light bulbs, but with the rise of cheap LEDs, there are now a host of lights and bulbs available. The ones I have here are 18 watt rechargeable lights. Having even consistent daylight lighting will mean that you don't strain over your hobby, and if you are doing things for competitions or display, that the finished model looks like you expect it to when you take it out of your hobby space and show it to others. These have a 3 8 threaded connector and supplied are a couple of brackets to enable them to adapt to a camera hot shoe as well. They have both variable intensity from 0 to 100% and also variable color temperature. My trusty scalpel can do many things, but some tools just do the same job better, faster or more safely. One or more pairs of scissors fits this description really well. I mainly use scissors for cutting out decals, though I have smaller pairs for using on photo etch if needed too. There's no need to go for super expensive modeling brands either. Something functional, comfortable, and relatively sharp is fine. So sticking with decals, one of the first things I'd advise you to buy is some decal solution to aid in softening and adhering your decals to your models. Without it, your decals can silver, where air gets underneath them as they dry and they essentially become small mirrors, which really detracts from the look of them. Now there are a bunch of proprietary decal solutions out there, but the best thing I've found is the miracle solution known as Pledge. This used to be future floor polish, but has since been purchased and rebranded to Pledge. A bottle of this stuff will last you for years and it's dual purpose. It acts as a semi-gloss to gloss varnish and sealant, and it's also a great decal solution. So you can use it to both create a smoother surface for your decals and then use the same solution to adhere and seal those decals all in one. So just go and buy some. Moving on to some more specialized items now. The first of these is the razor saw. These are extremely fine saws that you can use to produce cuts in model kits without losing a ton of material. And they're ideal for opening up hatches, flaps and so on. They can also be used to scribe panel lines in aircraft, a task that many modelers find onerous, but is easier with a tool like this. A pin vise is a small handheld tool which clamps micro drill bits so you can use them to create tiny holes. These are essential for opening up ports, gun barrels, attachment points, etc. And they're also very useful in opening up hatches or panels, especially if you're using aftermarket accessories like resin sets. There are some mechanical versions available, but I'd hold off on those until you're more used to working manually because most electric drills 
of whatever size are far too fast and will very quickly melt the plastic you're working on, sometimes with disastrous results. In most models, there is a large assembly or sub-assembly that is either too big to hold effectively whilst drying, or has some issue where one area wants to come apart while the other is being held together. This is where clamping the model is important. As is common in our hobby, there are proprietary tools for this purpose, some of which are actually worth buying, but most of what we need doing can be done with small, cheap clamps that are available from discount stores or DIY shops. I have a couple of different types, some small spring-loaded ones and some variable size manual ones. One word of warning though, if you're going to get spring-loaded clamps, make sure they're not too strong. This is where cheaper clamps are often better, and the ones we want are probably not going to be that useful for DIY as the forces we're applying to our precious plastic need to be fairly light, unlike the shelf you're making in the bedroom. The other clamps I use are from Burner Hobbies. These are Burner assemblers, they work with a little carbon fibre rod and these little clamps, and the tension is actually provided from the bending of that carbon rod. So you just squeeze them on the end and they apply a pressure very similar to finger pressure. So it's very light. These are really good for delicate assembly. Coming into the home straight, the penultimate products I'm recommended to you are different glues. Having decided to get into the hobby more deeply, buy some Tamiya Extra Thin, some Precision Applicator Super Glue and some PVA. I think it's Elmer's glue in the US. Tamiya Extra Thin is a fantastic product and will leave less to no residue on your models. It basically works in reverse to the precision applicator cement I recommended in the essentials. You put your pieces together and then apply it and capillary reaction will draw it into where it's needed. Super glue you'll need when photo etch and resin start to come into play. PVA is great for canopies and other clear parts and for dioramas or temporary fixing. You can also get some two-part epoxy glue, which I don't have shown here. That's also good where you've got parts where you need strength and you want a little bit more working time. If you watched my first kit build video of the Tamiya Sea Harrier, you'll have seen I mixed up a few of the colours I used on some of the parts in the kit. Now I just did this on a piece of spare plastic card as I didn't want viewers to assume they needed to buy a palette, but a dedicated palette is both cheap and makes life a lot easier. There are a load of different designs available, and they're available from hobby stores, art shops, and the internet. I have a few different designs, and it's good to have at least two for different types of paint, like oils, acrylics, and enamels. Another palette you might want to consider, especially if you're going to be looking at figures and dioramas, is a wet palette. These are invaluable for creating smooth colour blends by extending the drying time of acrylic paints, allowing you to control consistency and blend of them much more precisely. You can make your own from a takeaway container, some tissue and baking paper, but there are commercial products out there as well. Now I promised you another bonus tip here at the end, and you may well have guessed what it's going to be if you saw my first video. It is of course the airbrush. Now I will add my usual qualifier here, and I'm certainly not saying don't buy one. What I'm saying here is that all the tools I've mentioned above are really a higher priority than the airbrush, and you don't want to necessarily rush the airbrush decision and purchase. What I do promise you though, is that I'll be covering the airbrush in a future video and giving you some personal recommendations, tips, and experiences that will help you make your own decision about if and when to purchase an airbrush, what to use it for, and how much it's going to cost you. The second bonus piece I'm going to give you here is spend some time building up your paints. More paints are going to enable you to have more options in painting, and you don't need to go mad here and buy every colour in the Vallejo's colour sets. You can just buy a few basic colours that are going to enable you to make up other colours. Build up what you need, get a basic set if you want, but you don't have to go mad here. Just start to build up some of the colours that you're going to use. So to summarise, the top 10 things you should be getting to really establish yourself in the plastic scale modelling hobby are tweezers, vision aids, some lights, some scissors, pledge, some razor saws, a pin vise and some drill bits, some clamps, set of different types of glue, and one or more paint palettes. 
You should also start to think about whether to buy an airbrush and what your budget is if you're going to do that, where you'd put it and all of those kinds of things. Hold those thoughts and look out for my future video on that. I'm also going to be making videos covering the top 10 detail and weathering items too, so please be sure to subscribe and click all under the notification bell to make sure you see those. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. Please like, subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it. It's the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like it. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video. Mm -hmm.